You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke, That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, your host, and where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. And what you can expect is a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power, a gratitude tip of the show, or maybe a gratitude nugget, and how you can become a gratitude believer, and maybe one to three takeaways from today's show. And my podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk radio network, and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcast. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I really appreciate that. And to purchase a gratitude journal or to find out more about my gratitude speaking, group coaching, or one-on-one coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. So let me get on with the show and introduce my guest. The most important part of any podcast for That Gratitude Guy is, of course, the guest. And my guest today is Cornelia Stephanie. And so let me tell you a little bit about Cornelia. She has volunteered to come back to Earth to establish a new foundation for a new consciousness for the human race. She is a gifted intuitive energy guide pioneering the land of the new. Cornelia's work is about universal wholeness for the planet. She is a passionate and humane, and, and she is passionate rather about humanity's sovereignty, about maintaining authority over one's own life as empowered creation. Founder of the Empower Network, she empowers people on the path to self-healing, peace, and liberation. She teaches people how to embrace their humanity, offering simple, practical tools about how to live how, and how to heal their lives. Cornelia's leadership and co-creating a new paradigm with her vibrant online community engages people around the world to co-create their own universe, their heaven on earth, standing for peace on earth through daily practical online messages on how to live in the new world, being their own authority. She's a passionate speaker and the author of the book, Peace, The Flip Side of Anger, and she travels the world modeling and speaking about peace as an inside job. Invite Cornelia to come and speak to your audience. They will be offered a chance to reshape their lives by her powerful call to action with her 21-day peace practice and her focus on the three top ways for creating inner peace and claiming power in the midst of turmoil. And if we aren't in the midst of turmoil, I don't know what you would call it. Well, that's maybe a little longer intro than I might normally do, but it's well deserving of my first guest, Cornelia. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, David. Oh my God, that was that was not the bio that you were supposed to share because it's too long. It was just basically Cornelia Stephanie, speaker, founder of the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group, author. That's it. Yeah, I know. But now think about how much anticipation there is. That may have been an abbreviated version I could have had, but now they're going, wow, making change on the earth. That's so cool. So, well, let's start off with something that I always like to do on my podcast, and that is to give us a context. Tell the listeners how you and I met. Okay. So, the way that you and I met is I was speaking with a woman from Australia, uh, Jennifer, which by the way, Jennifer has been on your podcast. That's true. This is true. Jennifer was on and Jennifer is from Australia and Jennifer and I, I would have to think back to where did I meet Jennifer, uh, had, had a relationship and we were talking, I was inviting her to become to come on and also become a podcast host with the Cornelia Stephanie Media Foundation. And uh, she said, Oh, I think I would like to introduce you to somebody that you would really like. And a great guy, amazing guy. And she said, he's been a really good friend of mine. I've been friends with him for years. We've only met online. And she goes, but you have to meet David. And so, and I said, and she goes, and he lives in your neck of the woods. He lives, you right. know, in the Seattle area. So I said, of course, introduce me to David. So then she sent me an introduction and that is how you and I met on Zoom. 
That's or right. Something. That's right. And I do think it was quite interesting. Not only she live in Australia, she lives in the less populated eastern western part of Australia, rather Perth, not the Sydney and, and over towards New Zealand and introduced us and we're like 60 miles apart in the Seattle area. So we had to go all the way to Australia to get a connection that's just 60 miles apart. So, but that was really cool. And, and something I might mention too, that's um, almost sort of off the subject of gratitude, but still a part of it is persistence. And I remember when you and I first met and then we kind of went back and forth and what about this podcast thing and so forth. But I so admire your patience and persistence because if it hadn't been for that, we might not be connected because I remember a couple of as well yeah let me think about that do i want to do a podcast and for the listeners benefit and stephanie uh, cornelia stephanie media group is is produces many podcasts as part of the transformation talk radio network and that's what we first talked about but then there's been many, many other things that we've gone into as well so but you mentioned the cornelia stephanie foundation so what how does that differ from the cornelia stephanie media group well when you're speaking of the foundation is i'm always thinking about what am I putting on the foundation of the ground that I'm building upon? Mm, mm -hmm. And so the Co Cornelia Stephanie Foundation, the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group, it really all comes down to the, the, the one thing about our core values and mm. what are the core values that we are building our new earth upon. Mm -hmm. And so the Cornelia Stephanie Foundation is built on peace, mm -hmm. built on peace and gratitude and heaven on earth, new earth, compassion, do no harm, on living our spiritual values, what it is that we want from each other here on this planet, returning to our true nature and living in harmony and doing no harm and causing no violence. And, you know, this is the foundation. Well, and those are fantastic. And of course, you hit my... Uh like what is Groucho Marx, the magic word, of course, is gratitude, but people that weren't over my age or so or would know what that heck that means, but the magic word, but built on peace, gratitude, compassion, living in harmony. So how does that manifest itself? How do you go about helping people to achieve those very high moral values, if you will, through what you do? Well, first, I, it, you know, it, it always comes down to the person discovering who they are. Mm -hmm. And really guiding people in the intro when you were reading the bio, it talks about that I'm passionate about humanity's sovereignty to be the authority over one's own life as empowered mm. creators. And the only way that you can do that is when you know yourself and True. that you really start looking at and listening to what matters to you and who are you and what is your legacy and what is your contribution? And what are your gifts that you wanna share with the world? And what matters to you? So the only way that can happen is when you've sit, sat down with yourself to really ask yourself those questions so that you don't give your power away to other people and listening to other people before listening to yourself. You know, and I'm just making some notes here because that's, I'm very passionate about that subject and especially know oneself, as you just mentioned, um, discovering what they are in charge of one's life. One of the modules I teach in my speaking or coaching is find yourself, find your talent, find your passion, find your purpose. And each one of them, I think, leads to the next. To find yourself is all about getting connection with that person as you're talking about, know oneself, the person in the mirror, and then finding your talent, you know, not trying to put a square peg in a round hole, figuring out what you're good at, and then what you're passionate about. And then that those three things will generally lead you to your purpose. So if somebody has a tough time knowing oneself or getting in alignment with oneself, how do you kind of guide them or how do you sort of help them to, to get a better connection with that person in the mirror? Well, that's, that's a really good place to start. But one of my all-time favorite healing modalities, and this is how I started, and that is the journal mm -hmm. the journal right so basically who am i what matters to me mm. how do i feel what do i think about myself 
what do I feel about the world? So, you know, these are, this is the, the place to begin. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people make everything, David, I, I don't know if you feel that way too, but complicated. And it's really, it's really not complicated. This can be a journal from the dollar store that mm -hmm. you pick up with a pen and a paper, and you're just curious to find out who you are and what, what is it? you know, articulate your feelings. So basically, mm -hmm. if I would to ask you, the, ask the audience right now to sit down for 10 minutes and write from a stream of consciousness writing, just curiosity of articulate your feelings with how you feel right now. Just that for 10 minutes, write whatever comes to mind right. and put it down on paper. And what would come out? Yeah. And then read it out loud to yourself and see mm -hmm. like, wow, I had no idea you were feeling frustrated about that. Mm -hmm. Or wow, I didn't realize that you really wanted more space, mm -hmm. that you really felt like you were backed into a corner and that you don't have enough space in your life, that, that you feel like you're just running from task to task to task and that you don't feel like you have enough freedom. Oh, I didn't realize, Cornelia, that you felt like this. I'm so glad that you told me this. And in 10 minutes, you will have listened to yourself about what matters to you by articulating your feelings. And this, I think, is a, the first place to begin, to be mm -hmm. curious about how you feel. And, you know, I think one of the things that basic tenets of teaching people or exploring things and educating and being a lifelong learner and that type of thing is setting an example yourself. I know that as a, as a professional and as a parent and as managing people, you have to set a good example. Did you kind of start out, you mentioned healing modalities, but, but the journal, I love the journal and mine of course is a gratitude journal, but yours is, is journal, which covers a lot of things. Did you have somebody that kind of helped you along with that way back when, or did you sort of figure that out for yourself or how did that work for you back in the beginning when you understood the power of journaling? Well, when I, it, it pretty much was a, a soul prompting. So I, when I left the corporate world, which I left in 2008, and it was basically, I started listening to that inner voice. You and I start, you and I've talked before about really listening. Right. And so I've, I've, I've cultivated listening to that inner voice. I cultivated listening to the messages from source, the messages from the universe, just really deep listening. So the, the question came from the voice that said, do you want to live like this for the rest of your life? Was the question, do you want to live like this for the rest of your life? And I was, you know, living, I mean, working at a job that was I was very good at it and I was, you know, respected in, in, in the community. I was making good money, but I had no passion. I felt like a slave and I felt like I was working at a job that was sucking the life force out of me. Mm. And so the soul was asking then, do you want to work? Do you want to live like this for the rest of your life? You know, I'm in my getting ready to move into my fifties and what, you know, do you want to do this? And, and then the question was like, no, I don't. So then what was was your dream Cornelia what was your dream and you and I have this in passion in common too that is my dream always was that I wanted to be a motivational speaker well you know how do you become a motivational speaker at, at this stage of the game so when I left the matrix my job the corporate world I then got some certifications on uh, coaching and various different things. And then I got deeper promptings from my soul that said, I want you, I want you to really uh, get into this own deep soul work about emotional core roots and what the core wounding is. So emotional core wounding, and that's really mm -hmm. where it began. And so then I developed my own healing modality with doing emotional processing, the processing of one's emotions through investigation when you would be triggered, mm -hmm. being triggered by an event. And so all of a sudden you would be triggered, you would feel triggered, there's pain there. Mm -hmm. And then um, designing a discovery process to go deeper into that wound to find out what the pain is. And no, that happened 
Yeah. Well, sorry, I was going to say, speaking of um, the, the emotions and going through that and triggering that, and you said triggering things, something, because I went through something very similar when I left the corporate world to become the gratitude guy and become a speaker. Do you remember what it was for you was that what really gave you the impetus? Because I think that would encourage a lot of people out there listening because so many people, I believe, go down that path of, well, you've got the income, you know, you've got the salary, you know, it's, it's maybe reporting to the man at the big corporation or the woman, you know, what have you, but there's also the benefits and I get my 401k and so forth. Do you remember what kind of gave you the impetus? Was it something overnight or was it building or something that kind of gave you that little kick in the rear to, to, to make the change? I think it was, that was the time. So it was the time where I felt like I was a slave. And mm. remember when you were reading the bio in the bio, you said that, uh, that I'm, I, that I champion humanity sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So that's the place that I, where I am now, but at the time I wasn't feeling sovereign. I didn't even know what the word meant. And mm -hmm. I certainly wasn't living it. What does it mean to be sovereign? What does it mean to be a free being, to be the authority over one's own life? Well, at the time, I felt like all I was doing was um, buying into an American dream that had me living from paycheck to paycheck and keeping up with the status quo of what I thought I should be doing because of the dream that was sold to me about having the house, having all of this credit card debt and all of these things, getting the bonus check, paying off the credit cards, then charging up the credit cards again and doing that same you know, system again and not living, uh, not even knowing what my core values were. Right. So I think what was happening for me is that it was just that time now when that, that call was so loud that the soul mm. said, do you want to live like this? Where I felt like I had no time for nature, no time for fun, no time for passion, no, no time for anything because I was working all the time, you know, like 70 hours a week. And then I'd have one day off and then going back to do it again. And for what? For what? Yeah. Well, and I definitely applaud you as I do anybody else, including the road that I went down to for making that change, because I, I can't quote statistics on it or what have you. But I just think my guess is the majority of the people just don't have whether it's the guts or the willpower or the financial resources or whatever to make that kind of a change, they talk about it. And I find it interesting because one of the stats that I use occasionally in talks is the five regrets of the dying. And one of them is, is I wish I would have kept in more touch with friends and so forth. But another one is I wish I wouldn't hadn't worked so hard. And you and I have talked on previous occasions where I don't see is what you and I do is work. It's a passion and it's a giving back and it's a teaching and educating and making a difference and impacting lives and those types of things. And anytime somebody tells Cornelia or David, gosh, I can't believe what you said. This is so helpful to me. Or I got your gratitude journal or I got your journal or what have you. But another one of the five regrets of the dying is I wish I'd lived a life more true to myself than what others thought I should be, i.e. their parents or whoever. So for you to do that, I just really applaud you because it's just so easy to stay in the status quo all of a sudden, they're 50 or 60 or 70. They've had a life where they've hated what they've done, didn't really like their job, didn't enjoy the marriage or the relationship they were in, didn't like certain things, but never had the guts to change. And so when you coach people about having that ability to change, do you sort of give them any tips or any thoughts on how to break free of those chains, if you will, of normalcy or what's considered to be normal that so many people never seem to break away from? Well, first of all, it does, it is, it is a superpower. It, it's a strength and it, it, it's something that we all have that we can have access to. And that is courage, mm -hmm. the courage to be willing to live your life, to, right. you know, to take the courage when we know here's, here's the beautiful thing. Anybody can do it, David. It's when you're, when you're saying, when you're working with people, um, it's, it's the limiting negative beliefs that we listen to that says, I can't, I'll never make it. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm not rich enough. I don't have this. These are all negative limiting beliefs. Nowadays, we know how to change those negative limiting beliefs very quickly. It doesn't have to take long to change a negative limiting belief. When you know how to do it, 
you you know how to change it but first you have to learn how to change that old subconscious program that was placed into your subconscious mind when you were young between the ages of zero and seven where those filters were put into place and those filters most people are still making choices automatic choices based on those beliefs so the first place we would look at what are the beliefs and where do you want to go and if you really truly want to live to be free to be a free being and to live your life your day as it was your last seriously because if you only had 24 hours exactly how, how would you live your life yeah how would you, live your life? you know what i would be doing i would be having this podcast with you i would that shows that it's all about the passion that's that's a good point because i do the same thing I would have this podcast with you. I would have done what I did this morning at 10 o'clock at nine o'clock when I was leading with my, my, my women with, I would have had that meeting. I would have done that. I would have gone on my nature walk this morning. I would do that. And I, I definitely told people and do tell people that I love them. Yeah. And love because it. I'm bringing that conscious awareness, but I want to share this one thing. Mm -hmm. I just recently received this card uh, from, uh, from one of my clients. Mm -hmm. And the card said this, Cornelia, every idea needs a shepherd to usher it into the world. Every world needs someone to create new ideas so the light of its people can shine bright. Mm. Every light bearer needs followers to make the beam and its beaver visionaries and change makers. You are all of that. Mm. Thank you for being the visionary that you are. So it takes vision. What is the vision, David, for your life? Mm -hmm. What is the vision for how you want to live your life? Because as a visionary, you can create anything that you want to create. Well, and that's true. And I think the thing is, is I think it's magical when somebody asks that question, what is the vision for your life? And then it's even extra special if they actually go out and answer it or figure out what it is. I get concerned sometimes that people I come across, not enough people even ask the question. It's kind of like, you know, what team is playing in town this weekend or something? You know, it's like, well, would you ever wonder on a little bigger scale? So how has, as that gratitude guy my question's always going to be around that to some degree. How has gratitude, just that word alone, just that mindset alone, played a role in Cornelia's life? Well, gratitude is really a feeling and a consciousness that meet in the moment. And really to be grateful that I'm here right now with you talking about this and how we're influencing people to make their lives better and how important that is yeah. and how grateful I am for that. And I'm speaking it, I'm showing up in it, I'm saying it. So I'm living that gratitude life. Mm -hmm. You are that gratitude guy, but I, you know, even my, my book, Peace, the Flip Side to Anger, even in the back, 21 days, uh, it talks in here, every day you list five days, five things of what you're grateful for to bring it into your conscious awareness. But when you learn to live your life in gratitude, right? Because you practice gratitude all the time. You talk about gratitude as something that we, you know, that we can uh, practice living in and feeling. And why are you doing that? Because you know that the feeling of gratitude raises your vibration. And when we raise our vibration, we feel better. And that calms the nervous system. It calms the immune system. And next thing you know, your body is not in stress because why? You're feeling grateful. Right. So having that practice and sitting down with a practice of uh, gratitude, what are you grateful for? I mean, it's one thing to sit there and think, you know, oh, I'm grateful my, for my toothpaste and I'm grateful, you know, for this glass of water right here. And I'm grateful and that's all good. But when you're living your life in gratitude and making it as part of your daily life, that that your body loves to feel mm -hmm. that that gratitude, feeling good, knowing that you can relax and that you're safe and that you're feeling grateful. I'm grateful that I can be here and that I'm alive right now to be here in this moment with you in time and that I'm grateful to be here. It's it's a miracle 
that I'm alive and that I'm here. I'm not taking it for granted. And I take every moment that, you know, to bring it into my awareness that this is what I'm doing and I'm doing what I love. Yeah. And I think, again, at least from my perspective, I sometimes get disappointed just in the fact that I don't sometimes find enough people that are asking those questions and are really trying to understand how fragile life is and how fast it goes by and really what's going to be your impact while you're here. And I, I told somebody one day, I just want to make, you know, you've heard make a difference. I say I want to impact lives, but I think it just reminded me once I was visiting my mom's grave and I saw a tombstone that said unknown soldier. And, and I just thought, gosh, how sad to come onto this earth and be here as a person and then fight in a war and get killed or whatever. And they don't even know who it is. And just this unknown soldier. And I think, gosh, how, how incredibly fulfilling it is to go out there and be able to do what I get to do and you get to do, truly get to do, not have to do or need to do or but get to do. How to do. Yeah. And, and that's really helped people to understand their role. And I love this about um, – uh, the healing with that's who I am, what matters to me, what do I think, how can I make a difference, asking those really great questions of yourself. And I think it's so important. And that's why I'm always curious about, is there anything that you tell a person, like, here's some things you can do besides asking those questions, how to help help them answer them about who they are and what they are and what their role is? Is there, are there any little tidbits or things that you exercises, if you will, that you tell them to help them answer those questions? Well, I just would ask them to go inside and be, I mean, you know, here's the question and be willing to whatever answer comes that that's, that that's enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, to start there, it's like, again, not complicated. Right. One of the things that spirit asked me recently, this was just like a week ago when I was out on my morning walk, I listened to, I, I go out and I listen to the birds and I listen to nature and I listen to, you know, listen to my surroundings and one of the the messages that i got from spirit is what is it that you want people to know about you what is it that you want people to know so like for instance david i know like if you you know here we are here today gone tomorrow mm -hmm. here today gone tomorrow right so uh if if you were gone tomorrow i would know that what you wanted people to know about you is that you're grateful and that you never quit and that you're here to live your best life and that you want to empower people with the gift of gratitude. I know this about you because I'm curious about you. I've taken the time to get to know you. I wanted to know this about you and you are clear in communicating that message, that brand on what it is that you do, which right. is why I would know that about you. So on your tombstone, it wouldn't say a long lost forgotten soldier. It would be that gratitude guy was here and he made a difference. And what he wanted people to know is that he was grateful. So I, if I was to speak at your service, that's what I would be saying without even knowing, uh, you know, other things, but because of the short time that you and I have had. So when I was asking the question, when spirit asked me, what do you want people to know about you? Because you have kids, David, and you know, you, what, what, so they're, they're leaving, they're take, carrying on your legacy. I don't, I don't have children. So it's, it's a little bit different for me. So uh, I would be like, I was like, what do you want people to know about you? And the answer that came back was, is that I remember who I am. Mm-hmm. Well, and not only do you remember who you are or who you are, for you who, who I am, as you say, the in children, yes, you're absolutely correct. But at the same time, really, the many disciples, the followers, the the gratitude believers, as I like to call them, in many ways, those are sort of forms of our children that have understood what we're trying to get across. Does everybody agree with it or, or want to go down that path? No, but you're always going to find enough people that say, well, gosh, I want to get to a little bit deeper. You use that term every so often. I really like that a little bit deeper about kind of why am I here? What am I doing? What do I want to accomplish? You know, we're only here for about a 75 or 80 year time period, depending on life expectancy. And what, what's you, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want them to say about this? Like I read of an exercise once they had some kids in fifth or sixth grade, uh, right 
write their eulogies and and the whole concept was or their tombstone or something was to kind of predict what they're going to be here for because that they said here lies and as somebody said once you recently i thought was really great they said you never see a tombstone that says ceo of a major company had five really cool cars had two vacation places they talk about the kind of person that person was and great father great brother great sister whatever it might be so it really is about impacting people and things so so we got to wrap up and i just would ask you mentioned in your journal which i really like about the five things what's the top two at this very moment not this morning not this afternoon this very moment what's at the top of the list that cornelia is most grateful for oh wow that's that's really hard for me at the top of the list because you know it's hard for me to choose when you're putting me on the spot of course <laughs> that's but what I'll, i do I'll give it to you because the first thing that came to mind right now is that i'm I, we're going to have the cornelia stephanie media app mm -hmm. where all the hosts are going to be like your podcast other people's podcasts are all going to be on one app yeah, and that's be the neat. audience is going to be able to just click on their phone and click and everything is going to be right there and they don't have to go to all these different places so i'm really grateful for that the other thing I'm, I'm grateful for is, is the people that I'm surrounded by, the people mm. that my professional people, the people that love me, my clients, my friends. I'm, I'm very grateful. So those two things that excellent. Those are very good. And I think that some of these sayings get used a little bit too much, but I love the a rising tide raises all boats. And yeah. it's really true. And if you're playing with a better tennis player, or as I, I used uh, changed it the other day from a tennis player to a pool player, because I said, if you're playing with a really good pool player, you are very careful with your shot because you know if you miss, they're going to run the table and you're gone and you may wait another half hour in some tavern somewhere, another hour to get a game. But if you're sloppy and you just do it and you're playing with somebody who's not very good, you don't really care because they're not going to make a shot anyway. So we always sort of rise to the level of our competition. And so when you're surrounded by people that really, again, the rising tide makes such a big difference. It just makes your, your game, your life, your approach, everything just that much better. So that's well, why listen. we're so good together. That's why we're so good together because of exactly that we 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 show up to play big exactly that's well said well said well thank you miss cornelia stephanie and so that's it for this episode and i very much appreciate you being i do appreciate your persistence and patience as i mentioned earlier let me mention that one more time because otherwise we wouldn't be here so i appreciate and that i know I, can i say one thing to yes. you about that what a loss that would be. Yeah, exactly. Fortunately, we don't have to go down that road. So just a couple of reminders. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk radio network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and other podcast outlets. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I really appreciate that. And to purchase a gratitude journal, which I sell a number of, and to find out more about my gratitude speaking, my coaching, uh, both one-on-one -on -one and group coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. Also, if you'd like to receive my Monday morning minute, I send out every Monday at six in the morning, just text gratitude guy, all one word to 22828. The text number is 22828 and you put in the message box, gratitude guy. My guest on the 29th of June will be Mark Davis, who will talk about the role that philanthropy played has played in his life and how he's expressed his gratitude uh, feelings as well. And lastly, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, I'm David George Brook, that gratitude guy. And remember, be grateful and never, and never quit. quit. So long. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us, and you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.